William Reed, day one. It's been just over three months since the outbreak. It's hard to believe I've made it this long. I've been lucky so far, unlike this journal's previous owner. I found his body in the forest earlier. I searched him for anything useful, but all I found was a handful of berries and mushrooms, and this book. Considering the fact there was no other apparent cause of death, I decided to leave the berries and mushrooms. The journal was untouched, though. Whatever he was planning to use it for, he obviously never got around to it. Day 2 There are pros and cons to hiding out in the wilderness. It's much safer out here. The infected tend to stay in more populated areas, not out in the wild where their meals are scarce. Unfortunately, my food is growing scarce as well. I know there are some suburbs nearby, but I'm reluctant to head that way. I had a close call during my last supply run. The house was crawling with infected. I barely got out alive. It was mostly luck. They were asleep when Mark, Amanda, and I stumbled in. I didn't even know the infected sleep. We made a mad dash for the forest. I thought they were following me. I don't even remember hearing them scream when they went down. I just remember running until I couldn't run anymore. And when I finally collapsed in the forest, I was alone. Day 5. I don't have much choice. I have to search these houses for supplies or I'm going to starve. Chances are, most of the food has already been taken, but you never know when you might get lucky. Who knows? I may even find other survivors. Day 7. I hit the jackpot today. At first I wasn't having any luck. Most of the houses have been ransacked and trashed, but eventually I came across a decent supply of canned goods. The stench coming from the fridge was noxious. Electricity has been out for months, so I didn't even bother checking to see if anything from there was any good. Day 9. Can't shake this feeling that I'm being watched. Maybe I'm just paranoid, but I think I should trust my instincts. They've kept me alive this long. I'm tempted to spend a couple more days in this neighborhood stocking up on as many supplies as I can. I might be able to hold up in one of these houses, maybe board up the windows and doors. Might actually feel safe for the first time in months. Day 12. I'm taking shelter in the basement of some old house right now. Something set them off, not sure what. They've been howling and screaming for hours. Sounds like there's a lot of them. This whole subdivision might be infected. They sound close, too. Tomorrow I'm going to make for the forest again. I think I've pushed my luck, staying here as long as I have. Chris Miller, Day 1. I was woken up today by the sound of horrible screaming not far from the shelter. I didn't even know there were others around here. I've been here longer than I can remember. The days just blend together now. It's strange writing in this journal. This once before was someone's tale. Their life. Their horrors. Day 5. I found another survivor today. I try not to venture far from this area, but I was getting desperate. She seems nice, but quiet. She said her name is Alyssa. She had some supplies and offered to share. I didn't think people could act that humane anymore. Day 11. Several days have gone by since my last entry. I went on a scouting mission the other day to try and find some more food, water, and ammo. No luck though. I came back with less rounds and a scratched neck. Those, infected, almost got me. 
It's like they're almost as hungry as I am right now. Day 13. It's been 48 hours since my run-in with those zombie-like beings. Something's not right. I feel different. It's like my thoughts are not my own. I talked to Alyssa about all this. She said she knows very little. Alyssa was at a safe zone before power left the grid. They said that whatever this is is passed on by contact. Cuts, scrapes, bites. I don't have much time left. Alyssa will know what to do. Day 15. I feel so weak. I can barely think. When I do, it's of my wife and son. I lost them a month ago. I left for a little bit to get supplies. I came back to find the house empty. Empty except for trails of blood. I haven't shared any of this with any of the other survivors I've bumped into. Alyssa was the first one I've seen in a while. I hope to see them again someday. I, I miss them. I miss them so. Alyssa Huxley, day one. The hysteria contagion. That's what they called it. They said it was like a cancer, eating away at the victim's mind. It wasn't like the movies. It didn't kill them, or turn them into mindless creatures. It simply twisted their mind. It began to see us as the enemy, and became ruled by an unrelenting lust for human flesh. I think that's what scares me the most. Knowing that they're not dead, and they're not undead. Deep down, they're still human. Day 2. I found an old battery-powered radio. I'm surprised this thing still works. Someone's sending a transmission. It was hard to make out, but it was a signal. Meadow Park. That's where they're holding out. It's not far from here. Not far at all, actually. I'm leaving tomorrow. If I can get there, then I have a better chance of survival. Day 7. It's been a long couple of days, but I think I'm getting close. Don't remember the last time I walked this much. I decided to stay off the roads and cut through the forest instead. Should be quicker and safer. Haven't seen any infected yet. I think they tend to stay out of the woods. Even so, I'm going to try to keep my eyes open tonight. I'd hate to die now. Day 9. I made it. There's so many more of us than I expected. At least a dozen. They've stocked up enough supplies to last for months, and I added my food and water to their stockpile. I feel so safe here. It almost seems like there never was any outbreak. Day 13. It's so strange how much things can change in a matter of days. Just a few days ago, I was alone, struggling to survive. Now I'm here. I have hope for the first time in months. Things are finally looking up. <laughs>